back to winning isn't easy. Let's talk about chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy and your ERISA disability insurance claim. I've been talking a lot about pain and painful conditions. And let's take a, a, a moment to talk about chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy. It's known as CIDP. It's an inflammation of the nerve roots of the peripheral nerve that results in the destruction of the myelin sheath of nerve fibers. Now, I like to think of myelin as the insulation on an electrical wire. And you know what happens when the electrical wire is bare. The destruction of the myelin can cause a slowing or blockage of the nerve signals. And that in turn can cause weakness, paralysis, and impairment of motor function, and even impairment of sensory function. And generally, this disease will affect both sides of the body. The severity of the symptoms in the course of the disease varies from person to person. CIDP is thought to be an immune disorder, and the motion and sensory dysfunction can really cause a person an inability to do the material and substantial duties of their own occupation or any occupation. That, in turn, can result in a disability insurance claim. Now, what's important, uh, again, when you're looking at these kinds of cases is the chief symptom. The chief symptom of CIDP is a slow, progressive, symmetric weakness of both muscles around the hips and the shoulders and the hands and the feet. There's a pattern of weakness that can be caused by the nerve damage. Now, the uh, motor dysfunction and the abnormal uh, sensation issues can, pro can cause problems with coordination, numbness, and tingling, both of the upper and lower extremities. What's important in my view, since this is a progressive disease, is that when you begin to have symptoms, you are explaining to the doctor the symptoms. But as these symptoms progress, you need to be thinking, if you will, from the top of your head to your toes and go through each impacted area of your body, explaining to the doctor what your symptoms are and how those symptoms impact your ability to do your own occupation or any occupation. Take each issue apart, explain the symptoms, and explain the functionality. Now, of course, the doctor is going to be performing a neurological examination, which should be consistent with motor and sensory changes. There might even be atrophy or a reduction in uh, muscle mass. And there should be reduced or absent deep tendon reflexes. Now, that's important because CIDP can be difficult to diagnose, and the disability carrier is going to expect that you have EMG and nerve conduction tests, lumbar puncture, MR imaging, because they want to see confirmation of the diagnosis. Ultimately, they're going to be measuring the severity of those diagnostic findings against the severity of your symptoms and complaints they are also going to be looking at the nature of the medical treatment that you've gotten because they wanna see what impact that treatment has had on the progression of the disease or slowing or minimizing the symptoms and then how it impacts your functionality. So they wanna see treatment like steroids such as prednisone. Uh, they want to see uh, intravenous immunoglobin, uh, IVIG, they want to see plasma exchanges, they want to see integrational therapies. So they want to see all of this and measure, as I've said, the impact this treatment is having on your functionality. Now, many times they're going to argue that your symptoms are not so severe that you can't work. Um, so the severity of your symptoms need to be discussed in the course of your medical records, including the progression and your response to medication. That accuracy in your medical records and consistency is really uh, uh, um, important. And of course, that should be consistent with your reported activity of daily living form. As I've suggested in, in earlier segments, please don't be posting on social media. Please don't be posting curated reality. Please don't be doing anything that's inconsistent with what you're telling your doctor or inconsistent with your claims of disability. Inconsistencies, lack of documentation are case killers. Got it? I hope you've enjoyed this series about pain and painful conditions because 
pain impacts every ERISA disability claim. So I look forward to having you um, liking our page, leaving a review, sharing this with your friends and family, and of course, subscribing to this podcast. Thanks, and I look forward to talking with you in our next episode of Winning Isn't Easy. Are you a professional with questions about your individual disability policy? You need the Disability Insurance Claim Survival Guide for Professionals. This book gives you a comprehensive understanding of your disability policy with tips and to-dos regarding your disability application that will assist you in submitting a winning disability application. This is one you won't want to miss. For the next 24 hours, we are giving away free copies of the Disability Insurance Claim Survival Guide for Professionals. Order yours today at disabilityclaimsforprofessionals.com.